So the Monitor has given the Book of Destiny to Dr. D, and we've had quite a few run-ins, from Amazo to Batwoman, who was pretty fun, to now an evil Superman. A dark Superman? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... So last night, over in Arrow, we got a good look at Gotham, and the fact that Psycho Pirate was in prison there. I really would have liked to have seen more of him. In fact, I'd like to have heard a lot more explanation of what was going on in the multiverse in general. Especially this whole, there's an Earth 90 now. But before we unpack all that, what I do here is I examine stories, I take a look at how and why we tell them, and then I come up with theories of storytelling. If that sounds interesting to you, or if you just want to hear me rattle on a whole bunch of stuff about cool comic book things, click subscribe and join as we talk a look at the heart of the stories we tell. Now, this is far from the first crossover, but this one's a little different. This one is setting the stage for something bigger, another crossover. Specifically, I think that where the invasion story was just to see if they could do it, and Crisis on Earth X was all about trying to find their footing on how to tell them, this one's setting up Crisis on Infinite Earths, which has actually been being set up since, like, episode one or two of The Flash. The idea that there will come a time with the red sky when the anti-monitor will come. Now, last night's episode had this scene, one where everyone was standing off, and poofta, we found out how powerful Monitor was, because he could just, I, I don't know what he did to Barry from Earth-90, and he just sent Supergirl right back at herself. But we also learned that these Elseworlds are tests, ideas to see how you do when you interact with other people's powers. What happens when timelines get altered? Can anyone stop Dr. Destiny? So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Okay, so the Monitor told Deegan to think big, and oh boy did he. He rewrote the destiny of everyone on Earth-1, and that's a lot of people. Now, the Monitor even calls out Barry and Oliver on the fact that they did some amazing things, but this time around, they don't even have each other's skills. Although there is part of me that says that Oliver's had his particular skill set through all of this, so there's a little bit of BS, but even that I'm willing to overlook. The secret identity swap thing is even more interesting this time. Although I had thought they were going to do more, I guess that those preview posters were fake that I saw. So, in reality, what we have here is Deegan as Superman, which I did love Kara calling him out. Oh, you'll duplicate my powers, but not my gender, because you're afraid of being a woman. And you know what? For what little we know about Dr. D here, I think he probably is. There's that little piece of me that says that he would not if he was forced to have to be Supergirl, take the power upgrade to be Supergirl. He'd rather be Flash. And that just kind of blows my mind. I mean, you know, I'm not eager to be Supergirl instead of Superman, but if given the choice, I have to admit, that power set is pretty unmistakable. The other thing you need to take into account, though, is how they brought in all of the other Supergirl characters. Jimmy and, why can't I think of the sister's name all of a sudden, Alex. And part of that means that on every Earth, or at least on Earth 1, there is an Alex and a Jimmy already. It makes me wonder, is there a Clark? Is there a Kara somewhere out there? Are they maybe on a Krypton that didn't explode, happily living with the L family? Maybe. I don't know. Either way, we then have the fact that we have evil Cisco having to port them to other worlds. And there's part of me that almost wants to see the deleted scenes where they were landing on other Earths and just exactly what it was. Part of me wants to know what deal Superman has with a book like this. Because when they land in the Fortress of Solitude, he seems to know, basically, what it is they're dealing with. At least, in theory. And like I said, there's a lot going on. And then we have Evil Superman vs. Good Superman and Supergirl, and, well, let's be honest, that's almost a little unfair. 
someone who's not used to using the power. Let me go back to my whole argument for why Man of Steel should have been much easier. Oh, what? Someone that doesn't know how to use their powers? Like, can someone who grew up with their powers? Well, maybe in an world, there could be another thing. But, either way, this leads to the main thrust of the episode. And, again, we have Flash without Flash's powers, and Green Arrow without much Green Arrow training, going up and fighting their damnedest. And once again, the Firestorm effect, completely and totally overlooked. Not one person had to be written down for this. And once again, not to throw stones at other interpretations of Superman, but this particular one really strikes home to me in a way that others haven't, even though I like all of them. He, when he just saves people and helps people and is nice, you know what? There's part of me that almost wishes the Monitor had chosen to test Earth-38, because he's the hero I really think could stand up to anything. Although there is part of me that says that, you know, Barry could phase, and maybe the part of the Monitor's test was using your abilities to their utmost, and it still didn't feel like quite the Firestorm effect, because it felt totally justifiable that Barry wouldn't think to phase at that point, because that's the way Barry thinks, and even in this Elseworld, being presented with a challenge like that just kind of goes. And I loved him trying to help Ollie not be, well, Ollie for a minute. So, yeah, I mean, I really liked it. I, I loved all of it. I do wonder, though, I mean, Book of Destiny. I asked people in the last two episodes what they would do with it, and no one really gave me a good answer. No one gave me any answer, actually. So I'm kind of curious about that. Although there is part of me that says, you know, being Superman, being the hero of the world, but having a cool black suit, and on top of that, having a team at Star Labs that all helps you, well, that, that's probably pretty... That, that, well, that one's pretty good. It's much better than the last one where you just work at Arkham. But in the end of the day, the Monitor's test isn't just how to fight. Because plenty of superheroes know how to fight. Barry at first says the test is to stop Oliver from being Oliver, and that's wrong. Oliver has to be Oliver, and I love the fact that he calls the monitor out on that. I'm the first one that ever called you out, which makes me wonder, have there not been any Batman on any of the other ones? Sorry. All right. But the monitor's all like, all right, everything needs a balance, so what do I do? And what do they do? Well, they do everything they can. And yeah, the running around the Earth to slow time was a little BS. There was part of me that had hoped Flash was going to just share the speed force with them so they would all be in Flash time. But either way, all right, cheesiness aside, they were willing to sacrifice themselves. And I want you to think about what that means. But there is part of me that wonders, what did Oliver give up? Yeah, okay, the Book of Destiny got destroyed. Yeah, Deegan got cost. But there has to be more. And then there was the other little tease about what's happening next. Well, not so much a tease as they directly said 2019 is exactly what I was predicting from the beginning. With a monitor comes an anti-monitor. And with an anti-monitor comes a crisis. A crisis on infinite earths curiouser and curiouser what's going to happen i did also love the superman little ending where he proposed to lois and they're pregnant and i even really kind of appreciated the fact that he's leaving for argo city semi-permanently so that he won't be an issue for the supergirl comic or uh, tv series but i have to admit there's part of me that thinks that they could totally have a whole round with time trapper we have a legion of superhero in the future of Kara's Earth. We could have a time travel escapade where she needs to get the legends to come over to her world to help. But what do you think? Would you like to see any more crossovers before the Crisis on Infinite Earths? Did you think that there was a particular hero you want to see more? Let me know down in the comments, and especially, what would you do with the Book of Destiny? And of course, before you leave, if you could do me a favor... And give me a like and a share. 
And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button to join this little community. Because we're going to be talking about this next week, too. But for now, big thank you to my patrons. And even to those of you that aren't patrons, big thank you to everyone that watches and listens to my insane ramblings here that I know don't always go over the way they're supposed to. But as we're exploring what it means to be a storyteller and what it means to have a story be told, I want to dig deeper and get to the heart of all the stories we tell. For now, I hope you have a good night, and thanks for watching.